Justin Trudeau just had a full meltdown on TV, furiously accusing conservatives of lying to Canadians about his disastrous green tax scheme. But in a hilarious twist, the liberal lapdogs at the CBC just epically face-planted trying to trick the parliamentary budget officer into praising Trudeau's carbon tax disaster. Their underhanded tactics completely imploded as the PBO stuck to the cold hard facts, refusing to take the bait. Between Trudeau's desperate lies about his carbon tax and the CBC's pathetic attempt to manipulate the PBO, the Liberals are revealing their growing desperation and willingness to mislead Canadians about this destructive policy. The Liberals' increasingly desperate shenanigans prove they know a taxpayer revolt is brewing against Trudeau's abusive green tax scam. But their casifal games are futile. Canadians will not be silent anymore. And if anything is proof of that, it's the country's premiers testifying in the House of Commons against Trudeau and this headache of a carbon tax to end it and hopefully him once and for all. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Once again, our out-of-touch Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is accusing conservative politicians of lying to Canadians about his misguided carbon tax. In a condescending press conference, Trudeau claimed conservative premiers across this country are misleading Canadians are not telling the truth. Conservative premiers across this country are misleading Canadians, are not telling the truth. Eight out of ten families across the country in federal backstop jurisdictions make more money with the Canada carbon rebate than it costs with the price on pollution. So not only are we fighting climate change and reducing emissions, but we're putting more money back in the pockets of families, particularly in low and middle income families across the country. You want my opinion? The only one propagating falsehoods is Trudeau himself. He insists his carbon tax rebates offset the burden, but evidence proves otherwise. Canada's parliamentary budget officer Yves Giroux faced intense questioning from MPs about his office's analysis on the economic impacts of the federal carbon tax. Conservative MP Philip Lawrence noted that Giroux has been frequently cited in the media lately, saying you've been in the press almost as much as Miss Taylor Swift, I think, in recent days. Lawrence pressed Giroux to provide clarity on whether the carbon tax leaves the average Canadian family financially better or worse off. He asked directly, for the average family where the backstop applies, is there more money coming into Canadians' pockets or leaving their pockets? Giroux responded that if one looks at the fiscal impact, that is the amount of the carbon tax paid directly, indirectly, and the GST that applies on these embedded or direct carbon taxes paid minus the carbon rebate, most families are better off. And it didn't stop there. In an interview with the corrupt CBC, they tried to trick the parliamentary budget officer into admitting the carbon tax is beneficial. Let's just say that did not go as planned. Parliamentary budget officer Yves Giroux, who joins me now. Sir, it's good to see you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure. So you, I'm sure, have been watching what's been happening in the House of Commons. The conclusions in your report, they're being cited by the Conservatives in particular as proof that Canadians are worse off because of carbon pricing, and that means this policy needs to go. Is that a fair representation of your findings? Well, it's a representation of our findings once you also include the economic impacts of introducing a carbon tax. So there's the fiscal impact on households paying the tax versus the amount of the rebate that households are receiving. But once you also include the economic impacts due to the introduction of a carbon tax, for example, the reduction in activity or the slower growth in economic activity in some sectors, then that's, that's, the, that's the impact. The PBO's admission that the carbon tax ultimately leaves the average Canadian household worse off financially confirms what conservatives have been saying all along. Despite Trudeau's rebate scheme, the economic drag from this tax outweighs any rebate gains for most citizens. The indirect costs on businesses, production, wages, and growth mean Canadians have less money in their pockets at the end of the day. No matter how the Liberals spin it, the PBO's own numbers show Trudeau's carbon tax is making life more unaffordable, not less. This is clear proof the carbon tax is impoverishing Canadians, not enriching them. But Trudeau dares to accuse Conservatives of lying. While the truth is, Trudeau ignores the inconvenient truth that his carbon tax unfairly punishes taxpayers, kills jobs, and cripples businesses while achieving no meaningful emissions reductions. This tax-everything-and-redistribute scheme epitomizes the patronizing liberal mindset. 
Trugo thinks he can confiscate more of our hard-earned money, then benevolently return some crumbs via rebate. It's arrogant and insulting. Canadians deserve to keep their paychecks, not beg for handouts after Trudeau loots them. But the out-of-touch PM doesn't seem to care about the real-world impacts on families and workers. He just wants accolades for appearing green, while hammering Canadians with higher costs for gas, groceries, electricity, and everything else. A creeping tax that makes life increasingly unaffordable. As Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe testified, Trudeau's carbon tax makes it harder for families and businesses to lower their emissions. Yet Trudeau slanders conservative critics as liars just for pointing out the obvious failings of his carbon tax. Meanwhile, he ignores the fact that conservatives have repeatedly proposed alternatives to reduce emissions without punishing taxpayers. The conservative vision contrasts sharply with Trudeau's holier-than-thou carbon tax that pilfers taxpayers' pockets. This scheme is just a massive wealth transfer from ordinary people to the liberal government's coffers. Rather than misleading Canadians, it's Polyev telling the inconvenient truth about how Trudeau's carbon tax unfairly burdens average folks. The parliamentary budget officer concluded most households end up worse off under Trudeau's rebate scheme, especially lower income and rural Canadians. Workers ultimately pay through lower wages and lost opportunities. And for what climate benefit? Canada accounts for just 1.5% of global emissions, while major polluters get a free pass from Trudeau. His carbon tax weakens Canada's competitiveness, panders to UN elites, yet does nothing to impact global emissions. It's all economic pain for no environmental gain. But that's what Trudeau doesn't want Canadians to grasp. It's time for an honest discussion about practical environmental protection without penalizing taxpayers. But Trudeau refuses to consider any perspective beyond his own ideological blindness. He dismisses reasoned concerns and alternatives as lies and disinformation, rather than thoughtfully engaging Canadians across the political spectrum. Trudeau's arrogant unwillingness to listen explains the growing backlash against his carbon tax from provinces nationwide. Seven premiers recently pleaded with Trudeau to halt his upcoming carbon tax hike on April 1st. These leaders are responding to the legitimate anxieties of the hardworking taxpayers they represent. But Trudeau instantly rebuffed the premiers, falsely claiming they haven't come up with a viable alternative. In fact, Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe testified about his province's efforts to capture carbon emissions from industry. And Alberta Premier Danielle Smith outlined her plan to achieve net zero emissions through major industrial reductions. Rather than slamming the premiers as liars, Trudeau should work cooperatively to find solutions that protect the environment while respecting taxpayers. Conservatives recognize we need to tackle climate challenges through innovation, not punitive taxation. But Trudeau refuses to listen. The PM's imperious attitude is on full display with his planned carbon tax hike on April 1st. Trudeau sanctimoniously declared there will be no pause despite the inflation crisis hurting Canadians. Families are struggling to afford essentials, but Trudeau insists on inflicting even higher costs to virtue signal. He just doesn't care about the real-world impacts on hardworking folks. Conservatives have proposed practical relief like temporarily suspending the federal gas tax to help motorists, but Trudeau swiftly dismissed the idea without consideration. He'd rather proceed with his economy-damaging carbon tax hike than provide Canadians with tangible relief. Trudeau's escalating carbon tax is just another arrogant liberal money grab that picks the pockets of taxpayers to fund his bloated government. Conservatives recognize it's time for responsible leadership that respects taxpayers, reigns in reckless spending, and champions practical solutions. Canadians work too hard to see their money squandered on Trudeau's posturing carbon tax that achieves nothing meaningful for our environment. We need sensible leadership that balances responsible resource development with pragmatic conservation. It's time for Trudeau to drop the sanctimonious rhetoric and start listening to the legitimate concerns of hardworking taxpayers. His days of lecturing Canadians while hiking their costs of living need to end now. Canadians deserve practical and compassionate leadership that puts their interests first. Well, that's all for now. Do you think the carbon tax is making life more affordable or less affordable for the average Canadian family? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.